Hi guys and welcome back to Love Darts. I'm sorry I've been away. Sadly my mother passed away at the end of last year. So I've had a bit of time out just to spend time with my family and help them through. We had a fantastic year last year. I've got so much exciting stuff to show you I cannot wait. This has been the most popular thing I've been asked for at the beginning of this year. Which board to buy in 2022? Now I have 10 boards to show you. It's going to be quite difficult to show you the full in-depth detail about them, but I'll try and give you all the pointers that I can. I'll be telling you the best bits and the worst bits about the boards, and telling you what you should be buying this year. And remember, love darts. So the boards that we're looking at today are the Blade 6 by Winmore, the Blade 6 Dual Core by Winmore, Blade 6 Carbon by Winmore, Aspar by Target, Samurai 2 by Mission, Advantage 501 by Bulls, Bandit Duro by Shot, Unicorn Ultra by Unicorn, Obsidian by Viper, and the MPQ boards that are by Red Dragon. The only board in contention I feel I missed was the Gladiator 3 Plus by 180. When it comes to boards, many people are interested in which one is the most expensive, which one's the cheapest. The Samurai 2 comes out at the cheapest at $39.95. We then go Blade 6, Obsidian, Aspar, Advantage 501, Blade 6 Dual Core, Blade 6 Carbon, Bandit Duro, Unicorn Ultra, and then the MPQ boards, although you do get four boards for $94.95, which makes it £23.75 each. Now first up we have the Shot Bandit Duro. Now this board is quite expensive. It's a vibrant, shiny, exciting looking board. Sadly, however, when I first got it out of the box, there was a lot of glue, a lot of tearing around the bull with the white section, but there are some fantastic features to this board. It's such a shame that Quality Control didn't look at these wires because the wiring system is second only to the Bulls Advantage 501. For full disclosure, I actually bought this board at the beginning of lockdown. It's had a lot more use than the other boards, but all of the pictures that I took showing the gluing, all of the um, imperfections around the bullseye, they were actually how it came out of the, out of the pack. Now, it is $74.95, which is a lot of money for a board. You can get it available from Dart's Corner. I was really excited to see the board. It was very, very nice and vibrant when it came out, and what I liked most about it was the vibrant colours, those flush wires and it had a really appealing bullseye which is actually painted red so it looks even bigger. It has a really nice disc rotation system at the back which is much better than the single pin that you get in a lot of them which can ruin the board and I find it attaches to the board much better and to the wall as well rather than putting stress on that single point. Now on the con side there is a quality of finish that glue and paint shredding really really is a little bit off-putting I've seen it on a couple of other people's boards as well which you don't expect at this price point. The board has a really gummy texture which will be okay for some not okay for others. The plastic surround can be noisy and doesn't hold the corona light as well as the metal surround but if you're not using a corona light or if you use a surround anyway which will tuck it in it'll be absolutely fine. Now this is the Winmore Dual Core. Now there are three versions of the Blade 6. The Blade 6 Standard, the Blade 6 Dual Core, and the Blade 6 Carbon. The main visual things that you'll see between the three are the first one you can actually see the biscuit joins for the sizal on the board. That's, blade, that's for Blade 6. For the Dual Core, they've managed to finish that board off nicely so you don't actually see those joins very much at all. Or if you do, they're very, very light. Finally, on the Carbon, you have a beautiful HD ring, which is something we really wanted to see on the Blade boards. Sadly, it doesn't come with the other two, so you do have to go for the Carbon Edition, but I can see a lot of people getting the Carbon and maybe then getting a Dual Core afterwards just to save a little bit of money. Now, there are extra features to the Carbon Edition, is three cores triple core. What that means is the third layer is actually carbon and is a lot denser and it pushes these fibers together. It makes your board more durable and what I've actually seen is that the healing capability on the board is incredible. This is the dual core so there'll still be a lot of compression there and allowing for better healing. Let's have a look. So here we have the Blade 6 dual core. Now previously the Blade 5 dual core was one of the most durable boards and sought after boards as a home board. Now this newest edition from Winmore comes in at $59.95, which is right in between the Blade 6 and the Blade 6 Carbon. 
Now the pros of getting this board are that there is a new wiring system which you do get on the Blade 6 and on the Carbon Edition. It has a dense durable sisal because of that dual core compressing all of those sisal bits together. The dual cores were often considered one of the best overall boards in the Blade 5 range and this now with the updated wiring system, colours, print, it looks even better. One of my favourite bits though is that with the Winmore boards you get the rotor locks on the rear which allows for more security of that board and stability so it's really really nice and simple. Now on the con side the colours are slightly off on the Winmore boards, they've always been ever so slightly off, I think you get that sort of yellowy colour on the white section which you know some people like it, some people don't. Now it is more expensive than the standard Blade 6 although you do get a much nicer finish and there's no HD numbering that you get from the carbon. Now we move on to the Unicorn Eclipse Ultra. This is currently the board that they're using in the PDC for the Professional Darts Championships. Previously they used the HD2 which got a lot of criticism for the bull section and because the board wasn't very durable. The damage is much more aesthetic on the board and I do genuinely think they've made some improvements. The main problem is people using aggressive points. I tend to use the target fire edge points on my darts and this hasn't caused a problem with hardly any of the boards whatsoever. Unicorn recently lost their contract with the PDC to be used as the PDC board of choice. It lost it to the Blade 6 Carbon. Now this board is the same price at £74.95. One of the biggest criticisms of its predecessor, the HD2, was that it wasn't very durable as a home board. It got marked up really, really easily. When you pulled the dart out, you could see the sizal, sizal very, very visibly. Now, this board does have the best colors and printing of a board. The HD numbering also makes it very, very vibrant and pops. There's no wires that come off the edge of those sections and it has slightly improved durability from the HD2. So there are quite a few improvements, but against the competitors, it's just not holding up. It is less durable than other boards. The bull wiring sticks out a lot more considering they've had a chance to change it. I don't think they've done a good enough job. Printing appears less deep so the sizal strands do show sooner than other boards. We did also have Whitlock Gate where the board was marking up significantly during that game and Dead Bullseye Gate where people were throwing at the bull and there was dead sections and it was coming out especially for Michael Smith and other players such like. Now we move on to the most anticipated board of the year. This is the Blade 6 Carbon. It features an HD ring, triple core technology and an improved wiring system that actually brings it nearly flush to the board. I've already done a full review on the Blade 6 Carbon triple core. It is a fantastic board with some significant improvements from the original Blade boards. The wiring system is improved. The HD numbering was what we always wanted anyway. It's got a cleaner look to it with carbon fibre on the rear to make it look even more premium. Some nice grey HD ring instead of just a white ring which some people will like, some people won't. And it is the new PDC board of choice for the pros. Taking over from the Unicorn Eclipse Ultra which I think a lot of people could see coming. One of the most impressive things I've noticed is that it has a great ability to heal. By that I mean that I can press my dart around the holes that are appearing and all of a sudden it'll disappear. I don't get that with many of the boards, so it's a really really nice premium feel and an all round fantastic dart board. Now cons, the whites could be whiter which is I think a problem that I've always found with Winmore boards. You can see it on the Winmore text at the top and the whites. Um, I think personally they could have made the Winmore section grey to give it that more premium feel but hey. This is the Mission Samurai board. This is the UK DA board produced by Mission Darts. When these first came out they were incredibly priced. This one was sent to me by Mission Direct, hence why it has loved arts on it. For those who have seen my streams, you know that I use this board a lot during the last year. I've already done a full review on the Mission Samurai 2. It's a nice step up from the Samurai 1. It was used as the UKDA board and everyone in the Super League uses this board as well. 
Now it does get some criticism, but personally I still really enjoy using my board. I don't have any problems with the board. It's $39.95, which is one of the cheapest on the market. And considering how lucky we are these days, we have such a choice of boards. No staples, none of those issues at all. It's fantastic. So cheapest board on the list, used by the UKDA and Super League around the UK. It's also got customizable options if you go onto Darts Corner's website you can see there that they've got the love darts on the side which is a really nice touch they sent to me um, it's a nice board at a nice price I don't think there's anything like overly amazing about it it's just a good price you get a nice board and you can customize it cons it's a little bit harder than some of the other boards it has received mixed reviews in regards to Super League and that's me just being honest. There is also no HD numbering which is something that I really think we should see on most boards these days especially anything new that comes out. The wiring is average, average durability. At the price though I don't think you can really complain. Now we have the Target Aspar. This is Target's newest board. It will be used on the Seniors Tournament. It features a toughened plastic numbering, which is much more discreet than we're used to seeing. It also features Target and Aspar around the outside of the board, which means no matter which way you rotate it, it's gonna look nice and clean. A nice innovative idea, let's check it out. Here we have the Target Aspar. Now this one also is used a little bit more than the other boards, so it's got a little bit more marking. However, it is harder than, mo I think it's the hardest board out of all of the boards that I'm testing. Um, it does mark up a little bit more easily, and for those who do have a lighter throw, unfortunately it does struggle to sort of penetrate that initial layer and sometimes they do come out. That is just me being completely honest. At $49.95, um, it's a little bit pricier than some of the boards, sort of middle of the track really to be honest. Now this has a nice unique look to it, it's used by the seniors darts world championships as you saw Phil Taylor making his return recently. Uh, it's got a new style plastic ring and it is the best board for rotation because you can rotate it anyway and it'll either say Aspar or Target on whichever section you've got so it looks nice and clean. Uh, and also the wires don't fall off the edge of um, of each of those sections which you get in quite a few of these boards. Now on the con side, it is the hardest board on this list and it does mark up quite quickly. The numbering is not to everyone's taste. The wires are sort of average but it's that main sticking point of the board being a little bit hard that people are struggling to get over and the fact it marks up quite easily on the surface as you can see with those white sections on the black. Now we have the Bulls Advantage 501 board. This is one of the most underestimated boards over the last few years. I used to play on this quite a lot when I was working in Holland. It's got by far the best wiring system I've ever played on. The wires are flush to the board, the bull is really really enticing to play on, and it's a nice durable board. Let's have a look. Here we have the Bulls Advantage 501 board. Now this board has the best wiring that I've ever seen. It's almost flush to the board and is one of the main characteristics that I, I like about it. It's got nice colours, nice distinct lettering system all over there. At $56.95 it's not too expensive and I feel like this is a really underrated board. So like I said, nice bright clean colours. You can see it looks nice and crisp. It's got the best wiring which is almost flush to the board. If you have a look in some of those clips at the beginning there you can see it side on. You can run your hand over it and you can hardly feel those wiring. Really really nice. Makes it appealing to go for the bull and the inner bull. Uh, it's quite durable. The wires also don't fall off the edge of those sections as well so it's nice and clean and it also has that disc rotation system at the rear so a lot of really nice pros there. On the con side, it does have a slightly gummy feel to it, much like the Shot Bandit Duro. Um, they don't have an HD ring on this. It's got a plastic surround around it, which makes it less good for compatibility with the Corona light. And the durability is reasonable. The board is a little bit hard, but not quite as hard as the Target Aspar. Here we have the standard Blade 6. This board is widely expected to be the board that most people will be buying. Argos tend to do a lot of sales on them. 
the Blade 5 was incredibly popular beforehand. As you can see, you can see the actual sizal joins on there, which is the main difference between the dual core, apart from the compression, that you can actually get much more durability out of that dual core board. Let's have a look. I had a Blade 4 from Argos and a Blade 5 from Argos. They're incredibly good home boards, very durable. They've got a good, clean, crisp look to them. They last, and that's what you want mainly from a home board. Now this is the Blade 6, priced at 46.95, so it's the second cheapest board on this list. So it's gonna be really, really popular. A lot of people have been looking forward to it, and I think it's gonna produce exactly what you expect from it. It has good durability, like I said, that is for me the most important thing for a home board. You want a board that's going to last you a long time, you don't have to keep repeating. It has the rotor lock system on the back and the improved wiring from the Blade 5. Now up until now we've had some very very crisp clean looking boards. On this one, not that it's necessarily a bad thing but it's a little bit more sort of old school traditional, you can really see those biscuit joins and by that I mean on those white sections you can see sort of the veiny effect. So the sizal biscuit joins are visible on this, it doesn't have an HD ring and the wires do fall off the edge of each section. Now here's an interesting board that probably none of you have ever heard of. This is the Viper Obsidian. I was sent this by Darts Corner, and it's quite an interesting board. It actually turned out to be one of the softest boards I've ever played on, but also one of the quietest. Let's have a look. So what is this strange board I'm showing you? This is the Viper Obsidian. Now, I was sent this by Darts Corner, and when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, this is a bit of a strange board, a bit old school, but it's 49.95, and I put it up and the first thing I noticed is it was very soft and very quiet. I was like, oh, this could be quite handy for anyone who actually needs to keep quiet at night time, but still wants to play. Now, this is the same price as the Aspar. And you have two ends of the spectrum here. The Aspar being a very, very hard board. And then this board being very, very soft and quiet. I'm not going to pretend that it looks all jazzy and exciting because it doesn't feature an HD ring. The colours look quite old school and it just looks a little bit more like an old school board to be honest, which, hey, maybe if that's the thing you're looking for, then this board will be perfect for you. I don't quite know about the durability yet, I'm still testing it, but for now, if you like a soft board, great, if you don't, this is not going to be for you. The wires do fall off the edge of the board, without that HD ring like I said, it's not going to be looking like one of the most exciting boards, but hey, it's very, very quiet. Now we move on to the final category, the near perfect quality dartboards. These are available at Red Dragon and they're sold because they have slight imperfections on them. So they're usually a Red Dragon board or a Windmill board because both the companies are in line with each other. Now these come at £94.50, which is quite a lot to spend out, but you do get four boards. When you look at that, that averages out to £23.75 each, which is the cheapest boards you can get on this list. The tiny imperfections on the board are hardly noticeable, and like I say, you often got a Blade 5 or a Blade 5 dual core board from them, and it's a target that you're throwing at at the end of the day. It's the best value in the long run, and you can sell some, making your board even cheaper. I did have a friend actually sell three boards at £30 each, so they end up paying about £4.50 for the one board that he kept. On the cons, you don't really know which board you're going to get. Sometimes you get a staple board amongst them. It might not be always the same board that you get, you're not going to get the same purchase each time. And it might not always be the same board that you get, you might get four different boards. At £94.50 it is the most expensive and you do have four boards to store, but that's great value at £23.75. Just to finish off, this is the rotation system on the back of the Bulls board, the shot has a very similar one, this is attaches to the board and the other bit slots in just like that and that's on the wall. These are the rotor locks on the Winmore board, you also have a similar system on the Unicorn although they come off on the side, the same as the Viper has just here as well. I think the rotor lock system is better. And finally, a shot of how flush those wires are on the Advantage 501. So there you have it guys, 10 boards with lots and lots of different features and things to consider if you're looking for a new board. 
Now, whilst they all have individual features that make them all slightly unique and better in some ways than others, I think actually there is one overall winner. So just to finish off this video, here are my personal top three, and it is my personal choice. In third place is the Mission Samurai. It's great value, there's nothing really offensive about it, some people don't like it and say it's too hard. I personally have no issues with it whatsoever, I'd definitely put my money there. Second is the Bulls Advantage 501 board. I love it, I've always liked it, I love the wiring on it, it's a great board. Number one, my favourite board of 2022 is... The Blade 6 Carbon with its HD ring, almost flush wiring system. It's a good combination between soft and hard, the consistency is great. The healing capability, so for a home board it's going to last a lot longer, especially with that triple core technology. The Bull's good to play on, it's just great, it is a fantastic board. For me, the number one board and the best board that I've played on. I hope you enjoyed the review. Please like, share and subscribe. And if you're new to the channel, I'm thrilled to be back. Thank you, thank you so much for your support over the last year and a half or everything we've had since lockdown. Um, you've been fantastic subscribers. Please like, share and subscribe if you are new. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. And remember, love darts.